Hey everyone, thanks for joining me again. This is the third in a series of videos on how to build a markdown blog with React. And in this video, we're actually going to add the blog's homepage. And then that homepage is just going to be a list of blog posts or a post index. It's not going to be anything too fancy. And when we're done uh, today, hopefully we'll end up with something that looks like this. So you can see here we've got just a couple of blog posts and then we've got the blog content but only an excerpt of it so not the entire post body itself and what I've done was I've actually extended or redid the um, I redid the blog post that we had originally in the content folder but anyway let's get started so going back to where we were we only had uh, in our index.js file, right? We were just rendering the typical uh, create React app uh, project template homepage, right? So if we run our React app, we had npm start to do that. We just had what you would expect to see if you were, <coughs> excuse me, trying to create a React app, and it says here, of course, as always, edit. Uh, the app.js file in the source folder and then reload it. Of course we've got hot module reloading so we don't have to worry about that but just to see that that's working uh, we can go in here and change that text to say I have now edited the code in app.js alright so it's reloading and we see that it's working so now actually what we're going to do is just completely get rid of the stuff we don't need well actually no we're not going to do that we'll just go ahead and get rid of the stuff we don't need as we see that we don't need it we won't get rid of all of it right now so go to your index.js file in your source folder all right and what we'll need is React Router because we're going to have several pages in our blog application. You won't need this. Go ahead and get rid of that. And in fact, stop the project right now from running and let's add a couple of dependencies. The first thing we'll need is React Router DOM. And if you don't know how to use uh, React Router, or if you're not, if you haven't set up a project with React Router before, I encourage you to find some uh, video tutorial on YouTube or wherever, and just get yourself up to speed with that. Because I'm not really going to go into details on in how to use it, although it's not that difficult. You probably could pick it up on the fly with this tutorial. All right, so we'll install that. But we're also going to install a Markdown parser called React Markdown, and we're going to use that when we display the content of our blog posts. So that is React Markdown. So go ahead and install both of those. And I just thought about something. There's also, I wouldn't, I would like to use a, um, a special type of font that you would have to actually either import or um, add as a dependency using node and that's going to be the Google uh, the railway font from Google font so as soon as these finish installing we'll go ahead and add that we don't need this Good, so one more thing, so npm install typeface, and that will be railway, and we're going to use that. <coughs> and we'll bring that in here. Okay, so also we need to bring in react router.
Okay, and what we'll need is browser router as router or router and also root. We won't, well, let's do this for now. Okay, so we're not going to be displaying or rendering app anymore. But well, we will, but we will for just a, a short period when we test things out. But for now, add router. And then in there, go ahead and add a div. And then what we want to do is add a root to the home page. So we'll create a root exact path equals, and then we'll just make it the home page. And we'll use the component for now of app. Okay, and then finish up that component. So now we should be able to render what we had seen just a few minutes ago when we ran our, our React app, but we're rendering it through React Router now. So let's do npm start. Yeah, good. So you can see that we're rendering what we should render in React Router is working for us. Okay, but we're not going to actually use the app.js um, file. We're going to create another component, which will be our home page. <clears throat> so what you can do now is in your source folder, let's create a new folder and we're going to call it pages. I want to keep my pages separate from my components. And then we'll add a file to that. Well, first of all, we're going to need to style our uh, we're going to have a, a CSS style sheet for our pages. And I'm just going to use one sheet for all pages. If you like to do things a different way as far as how you set up your um, your styling, maybe you use SAS or something, that's perfectly fine. I'm just going to do things simple and certainly not in the way that most people would say are best practices. Okay, right, so also we'll create a file called home.js and that will be our home page. add that component to our index.js file. So remember, we're not using app anymore, so you can get rid of that. We'll say, in, <clears throat> excuse me, import home from, and then pages slash home. And then we'll just change our component out here. And we should be rendering the home pages, but we're not. Ah. That's a foolish mistake. Don't forget to right to export your your function. We're writing our pages as uh, functional components here. I'm not going to be using React hooks, but I, I tend to when I I code using React. All right, good. So now we see we have the home page. Probably we'd like some kind of header, so we'll go ahead and make that. We'll need a components folder for our components, of course. So make a components folder. And in that components folder, make a component style sheet. If you wish, you can do your styling any way you want. This is just the way I do it. And then we'll first add a header or we'll create the header component. We'll just call that header.js. Do the usual stuff.
let's call this React Markdown Blog. All right, because we want it to look like this. All right. Don't forget to export it. All right, and then we'll need to import our style sheet. Okay, and remember, we're giving the overall um, component wrapper a class name of header. And this is just my own personal taste. You probably have a lot better taste than I do, and you probably are much better at styling your, your web pages than I am, but I, I'll just use a background color of navy. Font color of, sorry, a font color of light blue. Let's give it some padding. So we'll say from the top 10 pixels and from the sides 20 pixels. All right, that should be all right for now. So if we go back to our home page, let's get rid of this. Of course, we'll have to import our header. here okay let's see where we're at okay so we have our header it's a bit bigger than I would like it we'll leave it that way for now oh, yeah for the Font, I'd like to use Railway. It's a little bit too heavy. Got to import it, did we? No, we didn't. I'm gonna use it all throughout, so we'll just go ahead and specify the font here. All right, there you go. All right, also, let's make the margin for our H1s zero. Good, that made it smaller. I didn't want it too fat. Okay, so now let's create a footer. We can easily do that. So go back into your components folder, create a new file, call it footer. Right, and if you're bored by this and this is something you've done a bunch of times, feel free to skip ahead in the video to the part where we actually do something you're not familiar with. <laughs> I just like to do the raw coding so that people can kind of follow along and see where we're at in the process, especially those who are fairly new to web development. Copyright symbol. We'll use 
my name or my username from GitHub. And then we'll just put the year, the current year. So what we can do is say new date. Instantiate it. Get full year. All right, let's take a well, actually, we don't have anything to look at yet. I always get ahead of myself. All right, good. And we'll bring this into the home page. So we got our footer and it's smashed all the way up against the uh, the header and that's fine. We'll fix that. Okay, that's good enough for now. All right, so what, we'll, what we should do, and I think that this is just good practice if you're going to build a blog and you're going to have a bunch of pages that look the same, is just build yourself a, a sort of layout template so we can go into our components folder and create a new file. And we'll call that layout.js. Do all the usual stuff. Now what, we'll, what we should do is we should include our header and our footer in our layout file. So let's do that. Let's bring both of those in. Okay, and then we can go back to our home page and rather than import these individually, we can just import the layout. not seeing it render is because in our layout we need to make sure that we pass in our children so we can do that here Just okay good so we see what we need to see and of course it looks terrible so we can go into well first we go to our components folder.
Okay, so that pushed the footer all the way to the bottom, and, and that's what we wanted. Now we'd like to center everything. So go back to your footer. All right, so we want to center everything within footer. We'll use, we're going to use the class name footer selector and here. So under header, create one for footer. And then we'll say, Actually, we don't want to. Hmm. That messed us up. I'll just text align center. Okay, good. So that's what we wanted. And then finally, for the blog post list content, uh, I'm going to pass it in here. So for now, we'll just center this and we'll call this post list. And since here we're in pages, we'll use pages.css. Let's see what that does for us. You'll find me doing this a lot. Well, I need to import a style sheet. Okay, there we go. All right, so basically all we need to do now is just put in our list of, of blog posts and that's not too hard. That's so what we can do is create a component called post list. All right, and that's what we're going to replace this H1 tag with. So go into your components, create a new file called post list. So, we'll go ahead and import our style sheet just in case. But we'll also need to import the actual post list, right? And if you remember, we were writing that to a, a file called post.json, which is in our, our source folder. So what we can do is we can say import post list from and right now we are in the components folder so we'll have to back out of that and then post.json and then we'd like to see or we'd like to confirm that we're actually bringing it in so we can console log 
post list. Then we can import this into our home page. And replace this with that. All right, where are we at now? We're not spoiling anything, of course. But if we have the component in there correctly, we should be able to see something in our console, and we do. These are the two posts that we're bringing in, right? And if you're unsure about that, take a look up here. This shows you the line number where you should find that post list. And if we go to our, our post list component, we see certainly that at line 8, we are logging the post list to the console. So that's working. Right? And when we inspect it, it's just as we remember it, it's an array of two objects and each object has some metadata and also the blog post content here. All right, so we're good there. <clears throat> now, how do we, we display this? All right, well, what we can do is, well, first let's just give this page a title, right, or this component a title so that we know what the content is. And we'll just call that all posts in keeping with our original design, which is here. give it a bottom a margin on the bottom of 20 picks to put some space in between the list of posts and the actual title you won't see anything yet All right now you may be thinking why do we want it right there in the center of the page maybe this should be up higher and I'd agree with you on that so we can fix that All right, what we can do is we can create a div here called, let's just call it posts. Let me think about this for a minute. Yeah, actually, let's not do that for now. We can maybe add that into the next video. I'm not so much concerned about style as we are with uh, functionality here. This is what happens when you don't have a script. <laughs> Sorry. All right, so we'll go back to this post list and just start getting things displayed. All right, so we need a list of posts and we're going to need to display them, <clears throat> excuse me, dynamically. <clears throat> Sorry, just taking a drink of water here. <clears throat> so now what we can do is we can say if we have that post list, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> it's really dry today. Let's say if we have that post list,
there are any elements in it. Then what we can do is we can map over it. Let's use an index here. So we can say for each post, then we can return. And then we're going to need um, some kind of like display card. I'll just call it post card. <laughs> That's a terrible name. So what we'll do is we'll say in here, make a div called postcard. And then we'll need a title, you know, the post title. So at the top, we'll put in an H2 heading. And this will be the title of the post. So here we can just say post.title. And the reason we can do that is if you go into your um, your post.json file, right? You know that your post object has a title property, and that should display this here. Okay, and we see that we are displaying those titles. Okay, so we have that. And just to separate the title from the body, we can put in an HR or a horizontal line. But maybe even before we do that, I'd like to put in a little bit more information. Like for example, and we'd like to put it in very small text. You can say published on, and then now we'll need the date. If you recall, the date is just post.date by, and then we'll need the author. And that would just be post.author. What does that look like? Okay, good. So we're seeing that. But I don't want to center everything like this. I'd like to have. Um, the title and this information pushed over to the left. So I can create, I can use the postcard selector in my components.css file. Then why don't we just say text align left. All right, good, that brings it over. Also, it doesn't look like we're using the railway font. I would like to use it. All right, good, that's working. All right, so now let's add the body. <coughs> so underneath our horizontal line, all right, we're going to actually need to use now our, our parser, our markdown parser, because if you recall, when you look at your uh, post.json file, that your content hasn't been parsed yet. Still, everything is in that raw markdown code. As to where your title was already a string, your author was already a string, but here we have, see, the markdown. And for example, the italics, the text between the asterisks. So what we can do now is in our postlist.js component file, 
we'll bring in and we'll import it as markdown from React Markdown. Now we can add this here. Now we actually have to pass in as props our our string, our content string, our markdown. So we'll have to use the property or the prop name source, and this is uh, actually in the documentation at React Markdown. If you go to their um, their GitHub page in their README, you can see that they show you how to use it. So you're going to pass in the property called source and that prop is going to take in that markdown input string. So for us, that's going to be post.content. <laughs> All right, good. So we're seeing our post content here. All right, it's really getting kind of tough to distinguish one post from the next. So we can go to our post card. We can give it a border. And we'll make it one pix. It's solid and we'll give it the same color as our um, header blog title which was light blue all right so at least now we can see those and then we should put some space between them so underneath each one let's give it a margin of 20 picks all right so that's getting a little better we're starting to see the the posts also we don't want to uh, have the everything pushed up against the left edge here so what we can do is we can add some padding as well oops All right. just give it zero vertically and say 20 picks horizontally okay good All right. so for now you see that we're bringing in our posts from our data, from our post, our post list data object. But let's use some different blog posts. So what I had done before was I created two new, or I had re, I basically redid the blog posts. This is not the one I did it in. Here we go. Good. So we'll replace the content in the first blog post with this. And in the second post, we'll actually put in a video. All right. So what do we have now? Oh, well, that's terrible. Remember, every time we update our blog content, we're going to need to run our server script, right, so that we can rebuild our posts.json file. So go ahead and stop the React app, run your server, just so we can update the blog content. And hopefully that has been updated. Sometimes you have to delete it and then rerun your server, but now we have it. So now if we just run, I'll go ahead and kill this and rerun your React app. All 
All right, good. So you've got that updated blog code. The problem here is, is that it's not doing what we want it to do with the HTML. And you can see that particularly here in the second post because I've added an iframe. So there's one thing that you need to do in order to render the HTML or render the markup the way that you want to see it is to pass in a second prop to your markdown uh, component and that will be escape HTML equals false. Okay, now if we look, we see that we're actually rendering our iframe here, which is nice. Okay. And if you're really worried about, or if you're not, right now you're kind of bothered by uh, how to use this React Markdown uh, package, feel free to visit the uh, docs page. There's a lot to, to take in here, but you can see that what I've just used is the escape HTML option. By entering false, then you, that'll cause the HTML to be rendered. Okay, but this might cause, um, security issues if someone could somehow inject some malicious HTML into your your um, your blog site. But we're not too worried about that right now. You'll have to take steps to make your site as secure as uh, you need it to be. Now, if you look at your, your blog post content, if we're just making a list of all of the posts, it seems, you know, foolish to have each post I mean, because we're not going to really want to read all of the posts on this page. We're going to want to be able to click on a post and go to an individual post page. So that means that we don't need to display all of this content in our index or, you know, in a, in a post that's displayed in the index, right? We just need to display an excerpt of it and we can handle that easily. So if we go to our post list file again, What we'll want to do is we'll want to create um, basically an excerpt for the blog content. Rather than seeing the, uh, like for example, on the home page, I wouldn't want to see this video here. <clears throat> I would want to see it when I clicked a link to take me to the um, actual blog uh, post page, which we're going to do in the next video. So what can we do here? I did this earlier and now I'm just kind of having a little bit of brain fade. Just trying to recall what I did. Oh, and it doesn't matter because I erased it. <laughs> All right. So what we can do is for each um, bit of content for each blog post, we only want to get, say, the first um, 50 words, right? We don't want to display all of the words. All right, so say for example here, we can make a, an array called excerpt list and we'll map over all of the posts in post list. And what we'll return is, well, first we, we need to take that string and turn it into an array of elements and each element will be a word, right? So we can say post.split, sorry, not post, <coughs> excuse me, post.content.split. And we're going to just split around uh, 
blank spaces or white spaces. All right, and then we don't want all of the um, the words in that array, right? We just want, say, the first 50. So what we can do is take a slice. And then when we um, pass this into our, our markdown component, it has to be passed in as a string so we can return everything to string form just by using join. And then we'll join around the white spaces. And if we want to see what that looks like, we can um, console log that. All right, what am I doing wrong here? Ah, okay. You probably caught that. This should be dot map. Okay, let's bring up our console. All right, good. So now we see we have, um, remember this is line 11. So if we go in here, line 11 is where we console log that list of excerpts. And we can see that we have two elements in our array, right? and say for element one, or sorry, the first element, which is at the zeroth index, we have the first 50 words. So what we can do now is instead of post content, we can pass in excerpt list, but we need to pass in the um, the index, right, of the post. So in this case, we're using i. So if we use i, right, that should give us an excerpt. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. All right, so that's too much, all right, for what we have now. All right, so let's go up here and not do the first 50. Let's just make it 20 and see what happens. Okay, that's working better. So now you can see that we don't have all of that extra stuff that we don't need to display on the index page. Okay, then of course React is yelling at us because we're not passing in a unique uh, key prop. So we can remedy that. And this is generally considered bad practice, but I'm just going to pass in the, the index as the key and we get rid of that. So React is somewhat happy right now. Okay, then maybe we want to make sure that the, uh, the person browsing this list of posts knows that there is more content to be seen. All right, so you can add in a little message. Say read more. All right, there you go. And we're going to add links to these later, actually, in the next video. All right, so, so far, so good. All right, we're displaying what we want to display. It looks somewhat like... Wait, was that our first one? Now I can't even tell the difference anymore. <laughs> If I reload this one, this one should disappear. Nope. Okay, so I, I accidentally canceled the other one, didn't I? Or was it this one? Nope. Okay. So, pardon me, folks. Anyway, let's just get rid of that. All right, so now one more thing we, we can handle in this video is when we entered in our posts, we entered them in so that we had the older post displaying before the newer, newer post, right? This one was published a day after the original post. All right, so what we'd like to do is actually display them in um, descending order, right? Or in other words, we want them to display most recent post first. 
so that will need that means that we'll need to go back to our our main.js folder let me just get rid of a bunch of this stuff up here so we're not going to be working with it right now so if you go into your main.js file I think I might have just said main.js folder, but I mean our public folder and then the main.js file within it. All right, we can do something here to handle that to make it actually go in descending order rather than ascending order. So down here where we created our post, right, and we gave it an ID just based on the index that we were using here. We can give it an ID based on a Unix timestamp, right? So what I can do is create a, a date object. And then what we want to pass into this date object is the actual date, right? Which would be metadata.date. And if you don't remember where this is coming from, you might have to revisit the first video. Basically, we created this metadata uh, object that had a few different properties. One would be date, one would be title, one would be author. So we're just passing in the um, date property. And let's see how that looks. We log it to the console. So go ahead and stop the React app. Run your server. Okay, so you see that you're getting that date object here. All right, but we don't want that to be in that form. I want to keep it as a Unix timestamp, right? So I can make a variable called timestamp. And I can say that equals date dot get time and divide it by a thousand. And that should give me a timestamp. So Check that out. Run your server one more time. Okay, and there are those timestamps. So you can see that the first timestamp is a slightly smaller number than the second one, which means our posts are being um, created in, our post list is being created in such a way that our posts are going in ascending order, right? And then there's Another reason for that too, when we entered in our, <coughs> excuse me, when we entered in our content here, first post alphabetically was um, ahead of second post, right? And then also you can see that the date for first post was earlier than the date for second posts. So if I were to put in another post that was alphabetically after second post, right? That would actually make it render as the third post. Don't worry too much about that right now. I just want you to know that we haven't done anything to affect the um, ordering of the post. It just appears that they're going in ascending order because we only have two posts and it's just coincidental. So now what we'd like, I'd like to do is change this and use the, the timestamp, right? The timestamp is going to be unique, so we can give it a unique ID. We'll pass that in as timestamp. So if we rerun our server, actually, yeah, let's rerun the server. We don't need to log that to the console anymore. And go into our post.json file. Okay, we see our IDs have been changed, right? To use the timestamp instead. So, so far, so good. Now here, before we write our files, we want to sort our post list, right? So what we'll do is create a sorted list. And we'll use the sort function. So that would be post list dot sort. And then if you're familiar with the sort function, you'll know what I'm doing here.
Now, A would be the first element that we're dealing with, and B would be the second. And what we're saying is that if the date, the timestamp, excuse me, not the date, which is the ID of the first element is larger, or sorry, smaller than the one of the second element, then we want to reverse the order. And so we would say that a dot id is less than b dot id and we'll use a one otherwise we'll return negative one and that is just how the sort function works okay and then instead of stringifying the post list we'll stringify the sorted list Okay, so now recall that we have our first post being the one with the lower, the smaller um, ID value, and the second one being the one with the larger. You can see that at the fourth digit. So we should be able to reverse the order of these two and have this one here be put, this post associated with this ID move to the um, top of the list. So let's run our server. Good, and they are reversed now, okay? And if we run our application in the browser, so we see now that the most recent post is displaying first and the older post is displaying second, right? As to where before we had the most, or sorry, the older post displaying first and the most recent post displaying second. So that worked. So for now, we're going to stop there. And in the next video, we'll go ahead and add links to both the title of the post and the, the read more text. And what we'll be able to do is click on those links and then go to a page that just displays the individual post. All right, and that's going to involve using React Router some more. But for now, I hope that you've been able to follow uh, what I've done here. Today might have been a little bit more uh, you know, me rambling than usual, and I apologize for that. It was just uh, going unscripted here. But if you have any questions or concerns, uh, go ahead and uh, leave a comment in the comment section below the video, and I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. So, uh, as always, thanks for checking me out, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.